Good morning, BookTube. How are you doing today? Say hi to Kurt. Hello, hello. Right. Today, um, I'm going to be um, giving you my review of Michael Bronski's Pulp Friction. Um, and I feel a bit torn here. If you are a fan of publishing history, um, I recommend this book even though the historical look from the publishing side is very slim. Um, it doesn't get into um, as much of that as I would have liked. Um, I think, I think the biggest flaw in this book is that it was written like 20 years too early. I think if this book was written now, um, there would probably be a lot more information um, at Bronski's fingertips. Um, the internet was a much different place in 2003 than it is today. And a lot of... Um, the books that he mentions, um, you could find with a quick Google search. And he states that almost every book he talks about is out of print. And whether getting those books um, by nefarious means or not um, hampers the situation. Another thing that this book rests on is giving you chapter upon chapter of these books. Um, it's one thing to give like an excerpt out of a book that's like a couple paragraphs. It's another thing to put entire chapters of these books into a book. Um, I think the problem I had with it was that a lot of these books that are about other books or about genres or about um, sub-niches a lot of people reading these books would have read all the books that the author's talking about. So you have this common ground when you first go into the book that you could um, kind of share in the ups and downs of the research of the author. But in this sense, because he was writing a book about books that were impossible to find in 2003, I feel almost that he leaned on that crutch a little too much. Um, that he could just... I don't know. And I said it in the last video I did on this, that maybe there just wasn't enough information to write a whole book about this. I think there was. And when you read Bronsky's introduction and his introduction to sections of the book and then his introductions to um, the books themselves, it seems like there's a lot of room there to be able to do this book without having <clears throat> all of these chapters of books in it and the reason why it's a problem and 
this is this goes back to the spoiler tag. I don't like to know anything about a book um, that I haven't read. And if I know a little bit about a book, that's one thing. But, I mean, there are books in this book that he's talking about that he gives you the last chapter of the book because he wants you to see how hopeless the end of the book is or um, whatever. And so it that bit was very hard for me to be able to enjoy the book. Um, I learned a lot. Um, there was a lot of stuff that I didn't know. Um, well, another thing about the book that I would have liked more was that the, the five parts of the book, the way the titles of those are, it seems like it is a chronological study of um, gay pulp from when the pulp started um, until after Stonewall. But then when you look at the books highlighted in each, se in each section, like one will be from the 40s, one will be from the 70s, one will be from the 60s, and it's just all over the place. And it almost feels that it... Um, takes away from Bronsky's thesis of how the books changed after Stonewall, like pre and post. And with the way everything's kind of set up, it almost seems like that's not necessarily the case. It seems like a, a good, well, I don't even want to, um, a, a chunk of the books changed after Stonewall, but I don't think really any, like, I don't think the majority of the genre did, and then there were even books that were before Stonewall that seemed to have that same message. So it's just like, I feel like there were times when he was making points, and then a couple chapters later, he would like almost accidentally disprove that point, if that makes any sense. <clears throat> so all in all, If you want to know about this genre and this world and the history of it, this is essential reading for sure. But um, I, there's a part of me that's like, I feel like you should be able to look at the books that he's going to talk about, read those books, and then read this book. Um, if you're a stickler for spoilers and stuff, because he'll just straight up say, like, oh, in this book, when this person dies, or when um, it turns out that this person... And it's like, there's no warning. It's just like, dude, this is what happens. And um, I know some of you were like, you petty bitch. And I understand. I am being a little petty there. But um, it's just one of those things. And then at the end of the book, which is almost more annoying, there is a um, appendix of books by year. Um... And that almost gives you a better picture of the arc of um, gay pulps. But instead of it being like a checklist, 
because most of these books he's already gone into great detail about. Um, like, the book titles aren't in bold or anything like that, and it'll just be, like, paragraphs of stuff that he's kind of already talked about. And so I find it strange that a book about pulp has so much fluff in it, if that makes sense. Like, um, the whole idea of, like, pulp fiction in general is like, you know, kiss, kiss, bang, bang, you know, like, and I feel like there is kind of a little bit of, um, being repetitive. And I know in educational critical essays, let's say, you make a point and then have to make a point and then make the point again and then make the point again a little bit later. So I understand that from a scholarly point of view, that is a very... Um, all right, and almost like expected way about it. But when you're writing about a medium that is very much against that, it's almost um, condescending to uh, be like that. Does this make any sense? Like, um, and I know I'm sitting here trying to sell the book. I'm like, yeah, it's a good book. Go get it. But, um, like, a lot of the books that he talks about as being books you can't find, you could find. Um, I've found a bunch of them. And, I like, every book I've looked for, I've been able to find. So, again, this is, like... The difference of 20 years since the book came out ish so um pulp friction by michael bronsky is a very good book um and like i said in that first video the introduction is worth the price of the book um i just wish that either there could be a revised edition of this book or um somebody else could come up and write um, another book like this now with um, the things we know now. I think it would really, um, really make it a enjoyable read. So anyway, um, if you've read it, let me know down below. Um, we were doing a group read of this on um, the Discord server that the link for is down below and there's all sorts of other stuff on there so um please feel free to join that and i guess that's it um so i hope you enjoyed the book if you read it and if not go get it so i will talk to you later